Some of us live life prepared and ready. Some of us live by the seat of our pants. But no matter who you are, Jesus calls us to live ready and faithful. As we await his promised return. So do not fear, little flock. Throw off everything that hinders and entangles. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, and run the race. Ready and faithful. A quote, be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning like servants waiting for their master. I love the way it ends. You also must be ready because the Son of Man may come in an hour when you do not expect him. I'm going to go off script a little bit here. Saw this great bumper sticker that stuck with, stuck with this sticker, stuck with me. Uh, and I thought about it, hmm, what would I say? This, the saying was, Jesus is coming. And underneath it said, look busy. If Jesus came today and walked up to you face to face and asked you a, just a very simple question. So, what you been doing? In other words, what have you been doing to promote the good news, to spread the incredible joy of God's love with your neighbor. Are you loving? I mean loving all your neighbors. So really ask yourself that question. If Jesus walked up to you and came to this afternoon, came up to you on the sidewalk and just asked in a friendly, matter of fact way. So what you been doing? What could we, any of us be saying to him at that moment? of what we've been doing to further the kingdom of God in the community around us. Because Jesus, especially in today's passage, is reminding us that we are accountable to him for the faith lives which we're living. Our Lord challenges us to be faithful at all times as we walk through our journey of life, trusting, trusting in him. Our faith is not something we can just turn on and off. It's something that always has to be prevalent, always turned on, those lamps always burning in our lives. Yes, Jesus wants us to be accountable in our faithfulness. Now, in order to be ready, we got to exercise our faithfulness to him, follow his teachings. And most important, there's that word trust, trust in his message, his compassionate, loving, self giving, self-sacrificing message, we have no idea when he's going to come. Like I say, it could be this afternoon, but we've got to trust his promises today, tomorrow, and every day down the line. Remember how Abraham, 4,000 years ago, at the age of 75, was visited, not by Jesus, this is 2,000 years early, but 4,000 years ago, God visited Abraham directly and sent him personally on a journey when he was 75. And where did he send him? He lived in the land of Ur at the time, if you remember from your Bible study days. Well, he went from Ur and traveled 500 miles on God's say so on foot. He traveled to take on the pilgrimage that God instructed him to take and said, trust me. Go on this journey to the land of Canaan, the land that we now refer to as the promised land. And then, years later, after he had been building a, a whole community in that area, God comes back to him at the age of 99. And what did he tell him? That he was going to father a great nation. This, a guy who's never had a child. He promised him that he's going to build 12 nations and an incredible uh, legacy that he would leave behind. 
this promise he gave to a man who, without a child. But Abraham trusted him. And at the age of 100, his first child, without doubting, was born to his 90-year-old wife. She gave birth to her first child at the age of 90. If that ain't faith, I don't know what is. She didn't just allow it to happen. She rejoiced at it happening. She laughed, if you remember, but that's a story for another day. Similarly, Jesus, 2,000 years later, asks his disciple and us today, even those of us over 70, and I think there's a couple of people who are over 70, but I'll, I have that on report, that there's a couple of people who are over, but the rest of us, you know, who are youngsters in their 60s, all of us need to trust him, to believe in what will come to pass, and we need to follow his example as set for us in the, in the good news. Then again, following that example, taking that great commission as exists at the end of Matthew, for example, is a scary thought. To do what he asks us to do is an imposing, scary proposition. Reminds me of a story. I don't have any slides for this one. You'll have to, I'll have to paint the picture in your mind's eye for, the, for this. So be, be with me on this story. Far, far away, in a hot, lonely stretch of desert, stands, rising up out of the sand, an old water pump. You are a solitary traveler, and your canteen was long ago bone dry, and you are just about to collapse from dehydration. And you come up on this pump. You think it's an, a mirage at first, but it's real. And you get right up to it and you shake it. It's, it's solid. It's there. And what's that tied to it? But a little handwritten sign put there by some pilgrim. Here's what the sign reads. I have buried a bottle of water to prime the pump. Do not drink any of it. Pour half of it in to wet the leather. Wait at least two minutes, and then pour in all the rest of the water to prime it. Then pump. This well has never gone dry, but the pump has to be primed to bring the water up. Have faith. Believe. And when you're finished drawing all the water you need, and more for later, put, fill up the, this container and bury it back in the sand for the next traveler. Okay, this is you now. You've come up on this pump in the desert and that's what this sign says. You're totally out of water, you're parched. What do you do, honestly? Will you dig up the water bottle from the sand and drink it all down because you're just so parched? Or will you believe and believing dare to pour not just some of it, but every drop of it back down into that old rusty pump? Are you ready to trust? Are you ready to take a risk both for yourself and especially out of compassion for the next person who will pass that way? Because if you drink that water, nothing will be there for the person behind you. But really, what will you do? Are you ready to be faithful to the written promises of God? God has promised through Christ to take care of us, to take care of our needs, to, to redeem us, to provide for us in his unique way. Remember in John 4, when Jesus told the Samaritan woman by the well, Whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. And just as God provided for Abraham and Sarah, faithfulness calls on us today to rely on God's promises for our lives, because faith is trust. Another example. If you're not a very good swimmer, I mean, I'm a fine swimmer, I'm not great, but I'm a, I'm a comfortable swimmer, but I know people who 
are really leery about the water. And if you're not a swimmer, you don't need to trust the idea about the buoyancy of waters, so long as you can still touch bottom, right? But as soon as you drift down over your head, that's a completely other matter. Now, if you become tense and rigid and fight to stay afloat, guess what? You're gonna sink. But if you just trust the buoyancy of the water and just lean back and trust, you will float and your life will be saved by that. But only if you trust in the buoyancy, because if you get tense again and get rigid, <laughs> you'll sink below the surface. So relax, tilt back, and trust the water of Jesus. In Genesis 15, the Lord said to Abraham, do not be afraid. I am your shield, your very great reward. And Abraham believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Amen. And today in Luke 12, Jesus said to his disciples, do not be afraid. You also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Are you here today? Are you ready? And if so, could I hear all God's children, that is people who consider them children and followers of Christ, can I hear a loud amen? Yes. That was a couple of people were loud, but not everybody. Let's do that again. Can I hear an amen? Yes. One more time, let's lift the roof off and know Jesus believe. Jesus knows we believe in him. One more time, amen? Yes. Oh, there we go. There we go indeed. Amen. Now, before we receive Holy Communion, Let's first declare that in the United Methodist Church, the communion table is open to anybody, anybody who seeks to respond to Christ's love. It doesn't matter if you've been baptized. It doesn't matter if you're a member of this church. It doesn't matter what faith you have lived to this point in your life. If you have decided that you wish to welcome Jesus into your heart, you are welcome at this table. Because this table is not community UMC table, okay? This table, you know, on, on property ground that's uh, tr in trust to the United Methodist Church, doesn't even belong to the conference or the United Methodist Church. This table is Christ's table, amen? amen. And all who accept Christ and wish to follow Christ are welcome at this table. Now, today we'll be reading from a more modern wording of an ancient tradition. Instead of looking for his Twitter, I may have to have you do it yourself. We're going to be reading, you can either go to the bulletin and there's an insert there, or you'll be able to read it from the screen once we switch over to that. Um, you'll be able to read aloud the bold lettering. Okay. This is the great thing to do. If I can say you can either read the insert or the screen. When I say The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Bless the Lord. God's holy name be praised. Praised in heaven, praised in earth, praised throughout your creation is your name, holy triune God. The trees of the field rejoice in your salvation. The stars shine out your glory. And the earth trembles at your presence. Winds and waters scatter at the sound of your voice, and we, with all creation, cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is Christ who comes in your name. Hosanna in the highest. 
Yes, blessed are you, Jesus Christ, word made flesh, deliverer from the evil. Led into the desert by the Holy Spirit, broken and strengthened by your fast, you have shown us the way to live by God's will, to reject the lure of glory, and to live and give our worship and our service to God alone. Blessed are you, Jesus Christ. Blessed are you for coming among us and for offering yourself to us in this holy meal to fill our hungry souls, to reveal your glory from the crucifix, and to empower us to break free from sin's souls and walk humbly with God and man. With your first disciples, on the night of your betrayal into death, you took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it, saying, Take it and eat this. I and then you took a cup and gave thanks and gave it, saying, Drink this, my blood of the new covenant for you. Even so, here and now, come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come upon these gifts of bread and wine, and upon us. Make them be for us Christ's body and blood, that we who receive them may be for all the body of Christ, enlivened by his blood, who come, Holy Spirit, and make us one. Yes, come, Holy Spirit, unite us with you. Come, Holy Spirit, and revive us. Make us whole and holy on this day, as we await that day when we shall feast with Christ in the new creation. To Christ, to you, to the all-merciful Creator, one God, living and true, be all praise and honor and glory, now and forever. Now i got to tell you, I wish we still had, in these COVID times, the ability to actually break bread together, but did everybody receive a, a cup? Can you hold it up so I can see that everyone has one? Okay, well, people first go to the side that has the bread on it, the weight side, and peel that off, open up the bread, and wait for one moment. Because there is one Lord, we who are men are one body, for we all partake of the one Lord. The bread which we break is the sharing in the body of Christ. Amen. Now, very carefully, peel off the other side with the piece, aka wine. In the brief moment of the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Amen. Finally, please stand if you are able and ready and declare our faithfulness to the Church of Christ by singing a song whose melody we're just about to hear. It comes, it's in page 398 of the Bible called Jesus Calls Us. Thank you. 
go to join the Holy Spirit in welcoming all God's children. Let us sing now together as we, as we exit uh, using hymn number 665 as we have been doing, and that is our song, Go Now in Peace. Amen. 